I, I think it's a close second, but I would still obviously go Bijan here. Yeah, I think that's the general consensus. But would you have to get blown away to make the trade just because you know that that's kind of what the value maybe is? Or, or are you okay with maybe, you know, not a wild deal to just swap those two picks? No, I honestly, like the way drafts have played out in, in my roster ship up to this point, uh, the guys that I've been getting in the 206, 207, 208 range, give me that with the 102. And I'm okay with that. Give me a uh, Roshan Johnson or a Tank Bigsby with Anthony Richardson. And I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, you're probably leaving value on the table. And you are you might be able to run into somebody that's going to give you, you know, whatever you ask for, essentially. Mm-hmm. But I think for the most part, people are, uh, I don't want to say cooling down on B. John Robinson, but I personally haven't seen those wild 101 trades that we were seeing in January and February. Yeah. So middle second value just to move back the one spot. That's something I would certainly do. Would you be trying to trade up to Bijan? I guess would be my, my question if possible here, or, or are you just stoked with Anthony Richardson? Yeah. You know, if I could get up to Bijan without selling the farm too, too much, I'd be definitely into doing that. It's no knock on Richardson, but you know, Bijan Robinson for me is my second highest graded prospect ever, even mm-hmm. in a super flex format. I very much overvalue or, or prioritize the value of the quarterback position. And Bijan still is right up there just below Trevor Lawrence. So he's somebody that I would absolutely trade up to get and would trade, uh, you know, multiple high uh, rookie draft assets to go ahead and do that. But Richardson, not a bad consolation prize at all. No, Bijan just taking some of the guesswork out of it. You're pretty confident with with what you're getting there. So, but you may have to pay a premium. Would there be any talk of trading down if possible? Yeah, you know, I would entertain it. If I was looking at a roster where, you know, I was looking at a a real long term rebuild, right? Uh, I was lacking depth. I'd be willing to trade back, you know, 102 to 105 feels like a tier break right now. Um, you know, you get Bryce Young, you get Jameer Gibbs, you get CJ Stroud in that range. And then you you have kind of like a quote mini tier in six and seven for me with the two wide receivers. So I'd be willing to trade down within especially that 102 to 105 tier. If I could pick back up future first round picks, I'd be looking to get at least a 24 first in there. Uh, depending on how far I'm moving back would be, you know, looking at acquiring a second round pick in 23 as well. If you could trade, if there was an option to move out of this pick, would you, is that something that you would normally do? Or are you, because of the scarcity and it's a rookie draft, probably the cheapest way to acquire a good running back. Is that what, what would be your thought process there? Yeah. I mean, usually when I'm looking to move around in rookie drafts, it'll usually be dependent on my team. So if I'm in a position where I needed, you know, franchise quarterbacks because I'm in, you know, a long term productive struggle type of situation, I probably would have looked to move up either to, you know, get Richardson, Young, Stroud, whatever guy uh, I'm, you know, super high on for me. That's that's Bryce Young typically because I think he's the best value and I, I like his projection the most. In, in a situation like this where I don't have a, you know, a team to work with or whatever, I also think Gibbs is just a great you know, neutral situation pick because you know, the dynasty market is so heavily influenced by age and you know, high draft capital running back, especially most, uh, most everybody's playing in PPR leagues. Obviously, Gibbs is going to have a ton of value in that type of format. So I'm cool. You know, this is not really a spot I'd be looking to trade out of most of the time. I'd be you know, happy to take Jameer Gibbs, maybe JSN if I had an absolutely loaded running back core on a hypothetical team. How many times out of 10 are you taking Gibbs over Jason? Probably like nine out of 10. Unless my, unless my running back core was just like, I already had the one, one and maybe had Brees on my roster already too. And, you know, maybe some other depth options like Damian Pierce types or something like that. And Mm. I was weak at wide receiver. I might consider sliding down a pick or two, taking whatever of, of JSN Jordan Addison falls to me and, you know, pocketing a second rounder next year or something like that. But for the most part, I think the the market consensus is Jameer Gibbs over JSN because, you know, running back is such a highly coveted position and Gibbs is already at the top five running back in dynasty. Whereas JSN has got some work to do to get ahead of those, you know, second year receivers that we saw last year. And of course the, you know, the top end LSU guys and lamb and Brown and Waddle and all those dudes. 
Oh, if I was sitting there at two five in a real draft and Jordan Addison was on the board at one nine, I would have been making calls for sure because okay. Jordan Addison to me was neck and neck with JSN. I there most of the draft process I had Addison above JSN. Once we started getting you know the testing numbers and you know some of the concerns uh, there with Jordan Addison, I, I moved him slightly down. But I still think, especially now that he landed in in the Vikings landing spot, that he has absolutely a case to be right there with JSN as wide receiver one from this rookie class. Are you trying to get up to one of those quarterbacks if you're sitting at one six here, or are you you just hanging out and making that pick, or are you moving backwards, or what, what's your general thought here? The, the only quarterback for me personally, and I've I had talked about this kid uh, as my my QB one, and I was, you know, and I still maintain, depending on the format in the league, Anthony Richardson should be in consideration for the one on one overall. Mm. Um, I've taken him there multiple times. Again, I play in a literal portfolio of leagues, so I've taken mm. him multiple times at the one on one. But that'd be the only one I'd move up for, and I'm pretty sure the cost to get him from one six to one two, you know, would probably be a little more, uh, more than I'm willing to pay. Yeah. Bryce Young. Maybe I don't know if I would want to pay to move up to get Bryce, and I wouldn't pay to move up to get CJ Stroud. Yeah, if you were in the quarterback range to move up to Richardson, it could be more likely. But but to be well out of that range, um, and kind of being not saying stuck at one six, you're still getting the top six. But it is seems like a costly uh, move to go up. So I didn't know if you were. I knew you were an Anthony Richardson guy, but yeah. I didn't know if you were willing to to go all in. If you've seen Kincaid's contested catch and leaping ability it's obvious to see why they wanted a guy like him in that offense and how they're going to use him. What, what, sure. what I would kind of conclude with as far as the potential reach on him is that I've taken Kincaid in 18 drafts so far. I have only taken him Ooh. at the one seven twice. And one of those was a two tight end tight end premium league. The other one was a full point tight end premium league. So in general, I'm fine myself trading back, like taking basically anything because I know that, most of my league mates are going to take QJ or Addison. I'll trade back to the 109 and get a push up from, you know, the 207 to the 203. Uh, honestly, like a negative quote unquote value trade, but because I know I want Kincaid anyways, you can pick up a little bit extra like that. Right. 18. Yeah. That's really pushing your chips all the way in right there. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm in, yeah, I am diversify in a, that portfolio a little. No, I, I am in an unhealthy amount of leagues. So <laughs> yeah. that's only, it's only about 35%. So it doesn't, 35%. Like, I'm not a good at math, but I mean, I'm decent at math, but that sounds like a lot. Oh I, uh, I, I, I'm in, I'm in about eight, 83 leagues now. Cause I got three startups going on right now. Um, but, uh, only about 60, 65 of them have had drafts so far, but yeah, that's, in, I don't that's even, uh, kidding me. I need a secretary to keep track of that. Yeah. You need an accountant <laughs> to account to count it. Uh, but yeah, that was going to be my follow-up question is, is, or the last question would, would, if able to trade, obviously we can't, you would try to trade down and, and we talk about it a decent amount, like in drafts, you don't know. I mean, obviously you want to win every trade the best you can, but sometimes if you know, you can get that and you, and you don't a want to put in the work or don't think you it's okay to, like you said, I'll kind of take a, in, in, in the view of percentages, a, a net negative of a, of a quote unquote trade to get it done, move back two spots, but you're still moving up. It's it's not what people think you should be getting, but it's it's okay to 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 not publicly win yeah, every trade with their perception. So if you were at the one eight here and you know everything's exactly the same way and you are able to trade, do you are you trying to get up? Are you trying to get back? Or are you just you're happy with Johnston right here? If I can get into the top six and it's something reasonable, a couple second round picks or something like that, I'm I'm thrilled to do that. I have found I've probably done maybe 20 live rookie drafts so far that really count. And it's just very hard to get into that top six. I think yeah. if you're sitting in this range, just because it's so very established that there is a tier of six and, and kind of the price that you want to pay. Like I, I'm not willing to give up an extra future first in order to make that move. Like I'll just roll the dice on, on Johnson having somewhat similar ceiling as like Jackson Smith and Jigba or whatever it might be. But if I've got some older vets on my roster and I'm looking to turn my roster over a little bit, and I'm okay parting with those so i did one trade it's it's way up the board but i did one trade and i had the 102 
and I traded um, Miles Sanders and DeAndre Hopkins and walked away with the 101. And so it was one situation there where I was adding B. John Robinson to that roster. I didn't particularly need the second quarterback at the 102. And so I was willing to give up a little bit of production on the back end. So so things like that, if, if I can do that to move around the board, I'll give you a little bit of veteran production or maybe I'll give you a couple seconds to move up. But outside i don't like trading future first because you never know where those are going to end up (laughs) and and like i i want to add a a premier player with one of those picks and so um, if i can move up i will um i'm not interested in moving back at at this position i don't think i um, I think that once you get through the 109 really the 110 kind of zay flowers dalton kk go off the board um i think the 111 i don't see much difference between 111 and even like 302 to that point i think that there's a a big massive tier of players there and so uh, i've been in position where i've had the 111 in some leagues and i've either rolled it forward to a future 24 first or i've just moved back and and accumulated multiple shots really throughout that second round early third round would you be trying to move up or back based on how this board fell um you know i I would be fine with with trying to move up um you know i I wouldn't get too crazy and i think that was kind of the default answer from everybody like the move up uh wasn't wasn't something that they were going to spend a ton of of capital on um, but if, you know, if I could trade, you know, a minuscule amount of things to get up to Zay Flowers, let's say at 110, I'd be fine with that. Um, but I think I'd be more looking, looking in the, in the trade back a pick or two. Um, but it's all going to just come down to cost. If, if it's, if it's cheap enough, I'll move up. If let's say Mason was on there and, and, you know, I kind of knew Mason's stance and doesn't like the fourth year uh, wide receiver there um, and he's sitting there you know maybe maybe I can maybe I can swing uh, you know a fairly cheap play into grabbing my guy and Zay Flowers there but uh, for the most part probably moving back uh, unless it's cost effective to go up if I had the ability I probably would trade back to like 2-9 two, 2-10 two, and get him there but we can't trade in here. So at that point, I wanted to make sure I got my guy. I wanted to make sure that I got Spears because talent wise, I, I think the world of the kid. 